The gospel of Jesus Christ is yet being preached in all the world. Amen. Living, he loved us. Dying, he saved
ourselves. But we wanted to give up and throw in the towel, God, you would us in your right hand. And you wouldn't let us go. And Father, we say thank you now. God, we thank you for allowing us to make it into your house of worship one more time. Now, God, somebody came with trouble in their hearts. And God, I pray that you'll remove all heavy burdens from their lives. God, I pray, God, that as we are worshiping you in your house, God, I pray that you'll turn the situation around in our house. Now, God, bless the man of God that's going to bring forth the word. Allow him to call me into the hollows of your hearts. That he will not sin against you, and the word will fall on the ground. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. And amen. Would you clap your hands knowing that it's already done and you can turn to the seat? Amen. It's already done. Introduce the speaker of the hour. Oh, yeah. Amen. He is an amazing man of God, Amen. one that can sing his own song, right. he can pray his own prayer, right. and he can preach his own preach. Amen. Right. Amen. He's well able to do uh, whatever God is going to allow him to do today. We're grateful to have Pastor Fred Perry. Amen. In our midst, can you clap your hands and celebrate? Thank God for both of them being here. Right. Amen. After the choir has sung uh, one last selection, amen. The next voice you will hear is uh, Pastor Frederick Perry. Would you stretch your hands towards him and say, Pastor Fred, preach the word. Now would you lift your hands towards heaven and say, Anyone you bless us, Lord. Your hands, if you know God is your instrument. 
who is the head of all of our lives. Yes, uh, yes, yes. To the very fine pastor of this church, say, hey, hey, hey. in the person of Pastor Hill, First Lady Hill, to all the associates and ministers that may be among us, and to our deacons and to our mothers, to all the official staff. It's good to be here. I think I can be safe now. I can. I feel a little better. I was kind of nervous. It's all right. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right, God. Look up. Look up. Y'all say, what are you nervous about, Reverend? <laughs> well, I was I was missing a reel. My reel wasn't with me when I first got here. All right, all right. I feel better after my reel done got here. <laughs> Word. 
I want to talk just for a little while. I was in prayer to God that he would give me a universal search. All right, that's good. One that would touch and one that touches the very core of every being. And God gave me a subject. And this subject, my sisters and my brothers, it has no respect to person. All right. All right. It attacks the young, the old, the rich, the poor, the happy, and the sad. And I know y'all are looking and you're kind of wondering, Reverend, are you going to tell me about this text, this topic, or not? Well, I, I think I need to go on and tell you that trouble, my sisters and brothers, will come to your house. So that's what I want to talk about this morning, how to handle trouble. I understand that y'all are celebrating, closing out this idea about Black history. And if you really dissect this thing, this text, this subject matter that God had given me deals ideally with that matter. Because when you talk about the things that our ancestors and our forefathers went through, they went through trouble just for our sake and in order for us to be where we are today. Y'all gonna pray with me? I know Pastor Hill already told y'all that Perry can preach his song and Perry can preach his preaching. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to be an Austin Hill, but I want to Perry rise this text in order to help all of us understand the idea about how to handle trouble. And sometimes, my sisters and brothers, trouble has a way of trying to cover up itself because many times we, as church folks, will just come in and folks will say, how you doing today? You'll say, I'm blessed and highly favored. And that you know you ain't just blessed and highly favored because you just went through some hell before you got here.
COVID-19 and, and, and we just begin to get bombarded, but trouble started before me. <laughs> Dr. Martin Luther King had what? Oh. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Yeah. Frederick Douglass had.
of the trouble in our life. Y'all right. yeah, yeah, will help me. Yeah, yeah. We must see God's hand. I know y'all saying, why do we need to see God's hand in our troubles? Well, if, if you can see God's hand in your troubles, you, you'll keep yours out of it. Huh? Because the Apostle Paul penned these words out of experience. He could talk about being triumphed over his problem because God had delivered them. But what are you talking about, Reverend? Well, well y'all remember when Paul and Silas had cast a demon out of the girl that Philippi? And after they cast that demon out, they got thrown into prison. And while they was in prison, wow. yeah. y'all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can't hear y'all. Yeah. While they were in prison, yeah. I want to suggest to you that they saw God's hand yeah. in the man. Yeah. Reverend, how can you say they saw God's hand? Well, because when, when they got in the midst of being thrown in prison, what did they do? One began to pray and one began to do what? Sing. Yeah, right. right. Listen, when you see God's hand in your trouble, you don't worry about it. You will just begin to pray and sing something. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Right. That's what's wrong with many of us when we go through our troubles. We don't look up into it enough to see God. I'm 
going to help me now. I got to go. You stay close, son. Stay close. You see, a lot of folks are bitter because they chose to murmur in the midst of their troubles. First Corinthians 10 and 10 says, neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured. See, we ain't the first ones to murmur, y'all. All right, all right. And were destroyed of the destroyer. See, if we don't want to be destroyed, we don't need to murder. All right. Yes, sir. If we would maintain a Christ-like response to our adversities and tell the Lord, hey, I see your hand in this, God. All right. Lord, I thank you for molding me, for teaching me through these circumstances. We'll find ourselves getting better yeah. instead of good. Am I in the house? Yes, sir. But let me tell you this, and I got to go. I got blessed the other day. All right. About two, three days ago, every now and then, I get a break at work and I'll see what done popped up on my timeline. Who done tagged me in something? Who done said something? I don't get on there much. <laughs> but this particular day, I, I got on there and I was blessed. All right. Because my son, Jordan, All right. had done made a post. All right. All right, y'all. Mm hmm. That's right. And Jordan said these words. I, I, I took it off Facebook and I copied that thing. I pasted it right in here. <laughs> Jordan said these words. Whenever something bad happens in life, we always question God. Why me? Why you do this to me? Now that's my son, y'all. See, when I first started reading that thing, boy, I was like, whoa, where my boy going? But then, Jordan said this. He said, but the hard thing to accept is why not you? He said, why are you so special that you feel as if you shouldn't have to go through any storm? We all want to ask God for millions of dollars, but don't want to go through the hell it takes to receive a blessing like that. No cross, no crown. Now, 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 and, and some of y'all still act like you're lost in the sauce. You don't know what's so profound about my 25-year-old son making a post like this. Let me tell y'all, about two, three months ago, my son, that 25-year-old that made this post, lost his daughter. Seven pounds, five ounces. Perfect a healthy baby, but the umbilical cord had gotten wrapped around her neck. And I know y'all saying, Reverend, why you want to preach this? I'm trying to preach this.
maintain the proper attitude. We got to see our troubles as working for us. Right. That's it. That's the answer. I know it was rough and tough on Jordan and Yanny, but they got to see their troubles Hallelujah. working for them. The Apostle Paul looked back at some of his sufferings. He reminisced and said these words in 2 Corinthians 4 and 17 for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. It worketh for us far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Right. Paul saw his afflictions working on his behalf. Right. John 16 and 33. Yes, sir. Jesus said, these things I have spoken unto you, well, that in me ye might have peace. Right. But he says, in the world ye shall have Trouble. Oh, yeah. But Jesus said, Be of good cheer. Yeah. Can I get a witness? Oh, yeah. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God. To them who are the call according to his purpose. In other words, my sister man, my brothers, the reason why we go through some troubles is because God has a purpose for us in our lives. 
showing it to my fourth graders. It becomes a little bit more relevant to them, right. but you'd be surprised what kindergartners would remember. Right. So this is 10 Steps to Arrive Home Safely. It's a video that Rod's going to show for us now. Thank you. Brother Rod's uh, getting that prepared. Uh, Madam Secretary, if you can hear me, are you prepared to, to give our announcements at this time? You ready? Okay. Be polite and respectful when stopped by the police. Be polite 
respect. Remember that your goal is to get home safe. Your goal is to get home safe. Your goal is to get home safe. Number two, if you feel your right to be violated, you and your parents have a right to file a formal complaint with your local police jurisdiction. Number two, 